better experience and a fun experience for you and your dog. Um, today's topic I'm going to deal with is uh, proper puppy uh, development. We're going to deal with uh, the critical and socialization periods. Uh, the interesting thing is, you know, the, the past shows I've never had to do any research on. It's just going from my over three decades of experience dealing with the clients and uh, what I learned from going to dog behavior uh, uh, training school when I was 17. But because there is or was exact, um, uh, you know, periods of time they broke down into the critical periods and the socialization periods. I forgot the exact, you know, weeks or days. But now I found after looking it up, I wanted to be accurate, um, there's a lot of different information on, you know, the timeline of when they break down these uh, socialization and critical periods. The main thing is that you understand that they exist and how important they are for you to better understand your dog and develop your dog's personality early in life. Um, so basically, your critical periods and what I've been taught, and some people are even breaking it down within those uh, critical periods, but you're looking at about four to eight weeks is the critical period, what they call, and approximately eight to four months is the socialization period. So dogs are just like people in so many ways, but when it comes to, um, you know, early conditioning, they're really no different than people. What makes you who you are as a person and what makes each dog is not only genetics, but what you experience, what your dog experiences, uh, the environment during these critical and socialization periods. So super important, you can alter what your dog's gonna be like as an adult with proper handling and training through these critical uh, socialization periods. For instance, if you have a dog that might genetically be more shy, or a lot of these breeds have been bred to actually alert or be guard dogs. So they've been actually bred to have suspicion levels of people. Your Chows, your Akitas, you know, there's many mores. And a lot of the little dogs were bred as palace dogs to be alarm dogs. So you have Shih Tzus and Lhasa Apsos and various other small breeds that actually have been bred to alert and alarm. So to give, you know, uh, people time to get ready for whatever invasion or, you know, uh, whatever they were concerned about back in history of, uh, in, you know, people coming and, uh, you know, enemies coming into camp and so forth. Um, so the main thing is certain breeds, if you get them that are even bred to have suspicion levels, you can really alter that by early socialization during these uh, socialization periods in life. So it's really important to have a well-adjusted dog later in life to address and know about these socialization periods because it's going to affect them for the rest of their life. So it's very important to get them used to people, everyone's their friend, and you're dealing with a fear imprintation period too. So if you're starting with a little shy dog or even a dog that's not a puppy, you can make them become more confident through proper handling. If you see them get scared of something, back off. You can praise them and coax them forward, move forward, and get them to be more confident in life, early in life. There's a thing we call kenalosis, which if your dog is isolated, it doesn't necessarily mean to be, have to be a kennel, but that's what they call it. So if your dog is isolated, early in life through these socialization periods, you know, eight weeks to four months, they don't get out of the house, they don't get out of the yard, it's gonna affect them the rest of their life. And in fact, they find an actual physical occurrence happens in the brain. The more your dog is exposed early in life, the larger the nerve cells will be in the brain actually, and there'll be more of them. And just the opposite is true if your dog lacks getting out and uh, to new environments and new experiences early in life, the nerve cells will be smaller and there'll, there'll be fewer of them. So we actually see a physical change take place. So you really need to realize that if you're getting a puppy, have a puppy, or even it helps you understand your adult dog you might have rescued or have, not know the background. And I deal with a lot of fear biting of dogs, shy dogs. There's dogs that we call touch shy. and when I uh, um, deal with these problems, I always try to figure out, is this man-induced through abuse 
or is it lack of socialization? Have this, the dog been hit a lot? That's why it's touch shy or it just never really experienced it. So that gives me some information to handle those dogs. But getting back to your puppy and the socialization periods, it's so important you get them out. And I, I have so many people say, Steve, the vet told me not to because of disease. He doesn't have all his shots. Well, I'm telling you, if you wait till your dog's five, six months, you have already lost a lot of this important critical and socialization period that's going to mold them as adults. I'm not saying take your puppy to the puppy park or dog park where there's, you know, other dog feces and they could catch something. Even if you take it in your own car and let it see things out the window, have smell new smells, get new stimuli. If they're uncertain of things, you can praise them, like I said, get them forward, build their confidence. If, and you, it's really important if your dog is naturally that one shy dog in the litter. As I've said before, even within the litter of purebred puppies, each dog is like, peop, like a person. No two are alike. They all have their own personality uh, characteristics and their own temperament. And the more aggressive dogs, dominant dogs, you can teach them, if, when you deal with them in their socialization period, to be more submissive. Get them to like tummy rubs. Don't overbuild their confidence by playing a lot of tug of war and letting them win unless you really want a real bold dog. At the same token, you can get a less confident dog and play a little tug of war and always let them win. This is a great confidence builder. Never rip it out of your puppy's mouth. You should always let your dog win. And you should always get your dog out to these areas. It doesn't have to be the dog park. Even if you go in front of a grocery store, let them see people. Let them see the carts. Let them see everything. So later in life, it's not new to them. It's not scary. You can do all the training in the world with an adult dog, but if it's fearful, it can all go down the drain if you get them in a situation where they're fearful. They're not going to want to stay. They're not going to want to come, maybe. They're too worried about the environment and people around them. So it becomes a huge distraction where if they had early socialization, it wouldn't have been quite a big, as a big deal to them. And the same thing is with stress. A li little bit of early stress in life helps them cope with stress later in life. You really need to start training your dog even. You can teach them during their socialization periods, even at eight weeks. Teach them coming's the best thing in the world. Get a good early start. Teach them to follow you off leash when they're puppies and coax them and encourage them. And this will mold their behavior later in life. Um, I hope this is helping you a little bit with your puppy today. I think we're getting close to going out for a break. I really, really want to get some questions here that you might have. You can uh, call us, uh, find us on Facebook at the Doggy Director, or you can call us in at 661-298-5487. That's 661-298-5487. 5487. I hope you'll come back with us. Uh, we'll be right back in a few minutes. The best live theater can be found right here in the Santa Clarita Valley. The Canyon Theater Guild has been entertaining audiences for decades with top quality musicals and plays. Located on Main Street in Old Town New Hall, CTG also offers workshops for the young actor in your family. For more information, call the box office at 799-2702 or go online to canyontheater.org. You already know Salt Creek Grill has the best food in our valley. Well, now you can have Salt Creek's gourmet meals catered to your event. I'm Greg Amsler, owner of Salt Creek Grill. I'd like to introduce you to a new level of catering, featuring our catering director, Tamara Levine. Salt Creek Grill creates memorable experiences, which leaves our clients and guests with a sense of awe and excitement. From menu development to picturesque presentation, you'll enjoy culinary excellence and creative catering. Salt Creek Grill, a new level of catering. Santa Clarita Valley has a long history of safe, reliable water service. SCV Water is dedicated to increasing efficiencies, protecting our vital resources, and improving their customers' experiences. That's you. Meet them at their new home on the web at yourscvwater.com. 
There, you can find the latest news, rebates, and much more. That's YourSCVWater.com. They can't wait to serve you. Drug and alcohol use can lead to troubles at school or work, relationship problems, financial or legal difficulties, medical and psychiatric issues. I'm Bob Sherritz, the host of the Way Out Recovery Hour, airing every Monday at noon. The Way Out Recovery Hour features prominent guests and organizations discussing the epidemic of drugs and alcohol in our valley. Don't miss the Way Out Recovery Hour every Monday at noon. Asking for help is the first step. There is the way out. It's like no other station I've ever listened to. It's great. Your, your hometown station. We are back. Uh, I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you find this topic interesting and it's helping some of you out there. I'm Stephen Ritt, the Doggy Director. We're talking about the proper um, way to handle your puppy, proper puppy development, and the socialization in critical periods of your puppy's life and how important it is to having a well-adjusted adult dog. It's very relevant if you're just tuning in now. We talked about the critical and socialization periods and, and how that can alter your dog's complete behavior and personality as an adult. Because like humans, everything they see, hear, and do, their environment, the stimuli around them, will affect them the rest of their life as adults. Of course, that and the genetics behind the puppy's breeding. And we talked about how you can alter more shy dogs na that are naturally born shy, and how you can also limit dogs that might have more aggressive tendencies and guide them to more of what you want them to be. So you should always, always, when you have that puppy, you only have that w period of time once in their life. So that's when you should really invest a lot of time in exposing them, getting them used to different people, getting them used to different places. So later in life, things are less stressful for, for them. You can even t take them to your vet to teach them, oh, half the time I go there, I get treats and we leave. There, a lot of dogs are fearful of the vet. They associate it with a negative. So you bring some treats. Tell your vet, oh, I'm just here to get him used to the hallway and the smells a couple times. You can even hold them if you're worried about early puppyhood diseases so you aren't putting them down. And, ha you know, so you you got to kind of about smart your dog and be smarter than a dog. Remember, if early in life things become negative patterned and it's always negative, your dog's always going to have a negative association Sure, there's things you can do later in life, professional training, but it's going to take you a lot more effort and time socializing later in life than as if this is just the way life is, it's a part of life, this place is positive, going in the car is positive. The more you get them used to various stimuli, various environments, different people, the more well-adjusted they're going to be later in life. Part of these little dogs that bark and people say little dogs are yappy, they lack early socialization. There's, you know, everyone that comes in is new. They've been bred to alarm and alert people for thousands of years. So you're not going to alter that unless you get them used to people. And everybody that comes over is a friend that they can trust. Then they'll start learning to be quiet right away. Otherwise, if they're fearful and shy, they're going to keep barking. They're going to back off. So it's, I can't stress it enough. Early socialization is really the key to a well-adjusted dog. You can alter it later in life if your dog, I've seen miracles. I once had a standard poodle that was never out of his kennel till he was six months old. So he was the epitome of what we call kennelosis. Beautiful dog. And he actually had submissive urination with everybody. I, I mean, in a certain way, it was a good thing he wasn't backing off, hitting the end of the leash. He, he would still stay there for the pet, but he would pee every time. I've dealt with a lot of dogs that, I, my own personal other dogs that I got that were shy to start with. They never ended up working in films. Sometimes they've turned around later in life, getting them out enough. You know, you get attached, so you keep them, even if they don't work. I've never gotten rid of a dog that I've gotten in my life. But uh, back to the standard poodle. Miracles can happen with some of these adult dogs that are so messed up, whether it's abuse, whether it's lack of early socialization during their critical and socialization periods. 
and it takes time. I can tell you a lot of the trick with you people with the shy adult dogs is get them out, make it positive. Less can be more to start with sometimes. I mean, don't overload their donkey where they're just freaking out and hitting the end of the leash and you're exposing them to too much too soon. But find a nice quiet place. Find nice people that will feed them to gain trust in people. That, then at the same time you're getting them used to new environments, you're going to get them used to people also. Take what we call hot bait, chicken steak, not the processed dry treats, but you want all the ammunition in your corner as possible. So you're going to make getting out new environments and people a real positive, uh, you know, experience for them. What I did with my standard poodle that had submissive urination with everyone he met, you take them out enough where they actually fall asleep and get that content and calm. Dogs take naps like people, okay? Especially if it's they're mentally stimulated, you've you know gotten some exercise. After a few hours out, they'll start laying on their side. This is one of the best therapies for shy, scared, fearful dogs. Take the chicken, take them out enough where they're getting enough exposure. The miraculous thing about the poodle was after doing this about a month, and I'm thinking, oh, he's never going to be able to work. He's never going to adjust. He'll always be afraid of people. Completely turned around one day. He just finally got tired of being scared. He had been able to sleep after, you know, hours out. He's being fed chicken, and he's having fun, good experiences. So you can overcome a lot of what actually has taken place early in life if you're willing to put in the time. And I've put just as much time socializing dogs as I have training dogs so they can work around distractions. It's a lot more work and takes a lot more time, so it's definitely better if you can to do it early in life with your puppy. Imagine if they haven't been out much, the world's big and scary, people are scary. If it, your puppy's been out as a puppy, oh, that's old news. I've been out, I've seen people, I like people. All of a sudden, they don't care. So you're going to instantly have a great working dog once they're trained. They're focused on you, everything around them, because of all their exposure becomes no big distraction. So it's very important to get, I can't stress it enough, expose your puppy a lot. You're going to have your dog hopefully 10 to 18 years. And that's, so to invest this time when they're young is really, really well worth it. So before you decide to get a puppy, and take a puppy and make sure you have the time. Because don't be one of these people that get a puppy, you didn't have the time, it stayed in the backyard, it didn't get socialized, now it's someone else's problem. You know, you're taking it to the pound because it's biting people, because it hasn't been introduced to them early in life. Um, it's scared, it's running away, it won't even come to you, and you're just passing it on. So remember, a puppy's a huge commitment, not just that you have to take it out constantly to housebreak the puppy, not that you have to take care of only its emotional needs, but you do need to spend time during these critical and socialization periods. And you're going to be so much happier to spend the time early in life, make the effort, you know, have self-discipline. So later in life, whether you keep the puppy or you end up having to place them, it's, it's now more well-adjusted. It's not getting stressed. It, you know, which, to see a scared, stressful dog is pretty sad. You know, even if there's, in your mind, there's nothing to be scared of, that dog's still experiencing the stress of, of, of being afraid. In fact, they're saying now that early stress and temper personalities of dogs can even be prenatal. If the mother, um, you know, during pregnancy has had a lot of stress, there's changes in hormones, and, you know, that's a whole other topic, but you can research it. Um, even though most puppies can't really smell, well, they can smell, definitely, that's their first sense, but they really don't hear and see till they're two weeks old. So, you know, what changes take place even prenatal and what puppy senses uh, can, can really absorb, you know, there's going to be more studying on it and everyone's got theories. But it, that's also interesting, you know, even vibrations, music uh, prenatal, uh, they say can affect uh, the unborn puppy. 
So it's really important if you're breeding dogs or you're a rescue and you find a pregnant dog, when these puppies are four to six weeks, start getting people petting them, getting them used to things being held. These first things they, and people and animals they see is what they bond to. That's why they say eight weeks is the best for a puppy because it's interacted with puppies enough you know, and has hopefully the people who have the mother have been handling them, so they're also bonded to people. Once they stay with litter mates, after eight weeks, they start becoming more dog orientated. And you don't want that. And they're already establishing pecking order. You'll see, depending on the breed of dog, how aggressive of a breed of dog they are, you'll already see gnarly fights and dominance. You'll see dominant sexual copulation in eight, ten-week-old dogs, uh, their Rottweilers, pit bulls, shepherds, and various breeds of working dogs, German bred dogs. So this is the time to start getting them to bond with people eight weeks old, getting them used to other dogs so you don't have the dog aggression issue. And everybody, throughout, you know, my life, I've always loved dogs. You know, in, in, in your, your walks with life, just taking the extra time to show kindness to people's dogs and pet them. If they're asking you to feed their dog, they're getting it used to people. We can all make a difference, you know, towards humanity, just in small gestures towards dogs. You know, offering to help people, especially in, locally here in Santa Clarita, I see a lot of people out trying to socialize their dogs or doing classes, and they're realizing how important it is they're taking their dogs to pet smart, socializing them. So take the time, help these people. You know, it might seem like a small thing, but in that dog's world, it's a big thing learning to trust people and learn people are kind if it's been abused. And there's so many people doing such great work with a lot of these dogs that would otherwise be euthanized, and they're not giving up on these dogs. And I. Uh, really want to encourage those of you out there that are adopting dogs that haven't been socialized during their critical and socialization periods properly or have been abused, keep it at it. Keep getting them out. Remember, the more they're exposed, it becomes no big deal. Don't give up. They can turn around. The, you know, Get them out there. Make it short and sweet to start with. Build up, all training is cultivating off of something small. Dogs learn through repetition, remember. They're very, very smart, but they need the reputation. You're not going to change two or three years of a certain behavior or isolation in just weeks sometimes. It's a continual, you know, effort to keep getting them out and making sure they're becoming well adjusted, they're trusting people. You know, it's just like aggression even. Sometimes it's not only about correcting the issue, it's getting, which is a symptom, it's more about getting to the root of the problem. Some dogs, you know, they're shy because, or aggressive because they haven't been socialized or they've been mishandled, you know, or they found, found people to be threatening so their defensive reflex come out. So rather than just correct the aggression, get more to the root of the problem. Get them to trust people. Get them to learn that people aren't bad. There's no reason for them, you you know, tell you to be defensive. Praise them when they're not getting aggressive. You can give them a correction. Of course, don't let them get away with getting aggressive to people. But you can always encourage and praise them and give them treats the second they stop displaying aggression. The more they start seeing people everywhere, nothing bad happens just by exposure. You can break down their reasonings for getting aggressive towards people. So we can all make a difference in our daily walks, uh, whether it's kindness to dogs or people. I encourage you, even go to the pound, bring treats, get some of these dogs learning the people that come up to the fence and their kennel are friends. Everything has cause and effect. So every, every little good deed, you know, does make a difference. And I think uh, with society, you know, it tells you a lot about humanity how we do treat dogs and who goes out of their way for the dog that's they see stray are you picking it up to see who owns the dog see if it's micro tripped uh in the summer you see a stray dog yeah, you give it food give it water you know i encourage you to visit your local pound volunteer with your local shelters 
uh, your local animal rescues. I hope this knowledge that I've given you today, uh, understanding why some dogs are shy, uh, what you can do with these early uh, you know, these young puppies early in life to help sure that they are more adjusted and can be placed in homes where they don't come back or go back to the pound. And I encourage you to use treats, use ch real chicken, because that takes their mind off of fear. Instead of just focusing on the fear, and these puppies aren't trained, they have no attention span, you're able to get, you know, their attention off the fear. You need something powerful. If they've been that isolated in life or they're that scared already as uh, young dogs, and this is the fear imprintation period, eight weeks to four months, use chicken. It's wonderful. It smells good. It tastes good to them. And it's easier to pull their you know, mind off whatever's causing them fear, whether it's their environment or people. So I hope this has helped you today. We're about out of time here. I hope this information you'll pass on, you'll share, you'll apply in your everyday life with you and your dog so you get along better. I'm here every week on KHTS, your hometown station. Please remember, never ever hit your dog. Patience and kindness will teach them much quicker. I'm Stephen Ritt. Have a great rest of your day and your weekend, and give your dog a lot of love and a pet from me, okay? Thank you. You can find Stephen every Saturday morning at 11...